What's going on my friends? DJ Lowstacks here. Welcome back or to the channel. And today, welcome to another product review, comparison, whatever you want to call it. So I've been posting a lot of gig logs lately, lots of content on Instagram as well, and I'm getting a ton of questions on how I'm capturing my 360 video footage. Also, a few of you have even noticed that the footage has gotten better, and you're wondering how I'm doing that. Today I wanna to answer those questions for you, let you know what products I'm using, how I'm capturing it, how I'm setting it up, how I'm recording, all that type of stuff. Now this video is directly related to how a DJ would be using this equipment, not your average person, right? So first off, I started out using this. So this right here, you've probably seen a lot of people using. Joe Bunn, a bunch of other guys are using these. So this is the Insta360 ONE X2. Now this camera is a great action cam. It does really cool 360 footage. The mics aren't that great in it. I believe there is an ability to hook an adapter up here so you can hook an external mic up if you wanted to. I never did do that mainly because I kind of blew this thing up in the first couple days I had it. So if you haven't watched that gig log, I'll leave the link up here. But basically what happened was I went to take off to an event. I had this thing connected to my trailer with a magnet mount. It fell off going down the road, scratched lenses all up. I was able to repair it and polish them and get them using usable again. But again, I wasn't super happy with the camera from the start because it really didn't get much better video quality than my GoPro. Um, other than the fact that it was 360, I did like that. But as far as the low light quality and stuff like that, it really wasn't any better than my GoPro Hero 10, um, which does okay, but just doesn't do very good in low light. You know, those action cameras, they're not meant for dark shooting. They're meant for shooting in the daylight, riding motorcycles, skiing, snowboarding, whatever. Um, they're not really meant to be in dark rooms, which we are trying to use them in those spaces and they don't work that great. So I signed up for the Insta360 mailing letter, you know, when I registered this thing. And not long after I purchased it, I got an email about a new product. I signed up for the pre-release thing and uh, as soon as it was available, it shipped. And that is this bad boy right here. So this is the Insta360 ONE RS 1 inch is what it's called. And what that means is the 1 inch stands for 1 inch sensor. So as you can tell, this just has a way bigger lens on it than the X2. And what that does is it allows this camera to let in way more light actually, to be honest, twice as much light as the X2. So it just makes it that much better in low light and it's gonna make it shoot that much sharper. Now they both do basically 6K, which you're never gonna get that once it's stitched together, you're gonna export and it's gonna be like 1080p. But <clears throat> either way, they both are capable of recording 6K um, and then you're gonna export and I think you can export in 4K you really don't need to. Anyway, this camera here has a couple cool features that I think really kind of set it apart and make it just way better than the X2. First one obviously being the one inch sensor. The second thing, I can plug it in here, I can keep it charging, and that's how I record most of my video. You can do the same thing with the other camera. I plug it in, I leave it charging, and the microphones built into this are way better than the X2. Just way, way better. I haven't had any issues with the audio quality. I really like the way that it sounds straight out of camera. Uh, I haven't had to fudge with it much. So I've never even had the thought of connecting an external microphone to this camera because I think it does a really good job with what comes internally. It also has really awesome flow state stabilization which keeps your footage if you're walking, it keeps your footage level and all sorts of stuff which I think is a super cool feature. Um, but the ease of recording I think is way better with this camera than the X2 as well. So how I do it is the first time I set it up, I turn it on, I connect it to my phone, 
I get all my features set as far as shutter speed, aperture, all that type of stuff. Get that set and then it stays that way. Uh, even if I turn the camera off, it'll stay and hold those settings. So then what I can do is right here, I can hit this quick record button. So this button right here, I'll have it set up. If I want to start recording, I reach up, hit that, boom, it starts recording. And when I want to stop, I just reach up and stop it. Or I can just let it run. So a lot of times during open dancing, I'll connect this thing to external power, have a cable running down, and I'll hit record and I'll just let it run. I put a 256 gigabyte SD card in there so it will easily you know, hold that that much time. I think it records like five hours at the time. And then I do all my editing. I don't use the phone app. I actually use the desktop app for Mac to edit all the footage. Then I export that footage from that, uh, that app <clears throat> into Final Cut into my timeline for my gig logs. I also use it, same thing, I do my reels and things like that in Final Cut as well. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing my workflow on that, leave me a comment down below. If I get enough comments, I'll set that up and I'll do a recording of uh, my workflow for the 360s and how I'm making my reels and my full on YouTube videos. Basically, long story short guys, um, this camera does come in at twice the price. So it is $800 versus 429 for this. If you plan on only using this thing or primarily using this thing to capture DJ footage in low light, this is the way to go. Um, save your money, spend the extra cash. You'll be way happier with this than you will the One X2. But if you're the type of guy that you might double up and you might use it for some you know, outdoor footage around the house or going water skiing or kayaking or whatever, and you're gonna dunk this thing in the water and use the waterproof features, you might be better off going with this. Or if, honestly, if you just don't have the money to spend and you're just trying to capture some content to post on your social media, this probably is good enough. But if you're really looking to take the next step and just you know up your up your game as far as the 360 footage goes, you know this almost gets as good a quality as my DSLR camera does, and the photo quality is actually really good as well. So I've taken some stills with it, and it does a really good job. So let me just for the sake of it, I'm going to insert some clips that I filmed with this, and I will see. I think I have some clips of the One X2 for a comparison, and uh, that way you guys can see the difference on what the footage looks like. But I'll insert that stuff right here. Alright guys, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, if it was, leave a comment down below, let me know. But as always, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing, click that like button, and click that notification bell so you can get notifications of my upcoming videos. Peace.